Medical professionals, when did you have to tell a patient I've seen it all before to comfort them? I had a lady come into the ER listed as multiple medical problems. This usually means diabetes and the issues stemming from it or maybe bleeding issues from another disease or maybe odd blood tests results at a clinic. I hadn't seen the patient yet, but the doctor came to the nurse's station asking who at room 15. I jumped up and followed him into the room. I walked in and saw what I thought was a corpse. Then the patient's eye swiveled over to look at me. She truly looked like one of the people they found in a concentration camp. I could see every bone in her body was twisted in a decorticate position with her jaw locked open. Then the smell hit me, rotting flesh, death, and body fluids. I struggled to keep a neutral face and not gag. I tried to place a blood pressure cuff on her arm and her skin just started flaking off in my hands. I gagged. The doctor started removing her clothes to examine her. Her feet were black to the ankles. Her hip bones were poking through her skin and were black. The skin around her ribs was worn away to oozing muscle fibers. Her calves were incredibly swollen and the skin was splitting like ripped pants. I removed her depends, and there was feces coating her entire genital area. Then the doctor went to remove a large bandage on her lower back. Her entire sacrum was exposed and the bones were black. The skin around it was a black liquefied mass. It smelled like nothing I've ever smelled. I can't even describe it. The doctor told her family I would clean up her ulcers and wounds in preparation for surgery. Liar, no surgeon would operate on her. I had no idea how to clean dead bone tissue and liquefied skin, they don't cover that in nursing school. When I went to clean her sacral area, all the liquefied skin separated and oozed all over the bed. I really struggled to keep my shit together. Afterwards, I needed a moment in the supply closet to cry it out for a second. I had no idea the human body could break down so much without dying. I still think about that woman sometimes and what led to her living like that. I'm a nurse and I work in a pediatric ER. A young woman brought her baby in to be seen for vomiting. I ask her to put the baby on the scale. While on the scale I notice a strong odor of bug spray so I asked about it. Mom, a roach crawled into her mouth so I sprayed a little raid in there. She said it matter of factually like it was no big deal. K up calls to the police, CPS for the child and the mom. When all was said and done the baby was fine and turned over to her grandmother so no worries there. I have no idea what happened to the mother. I don't believe she was intending to hurt the child. I think she was just butt ass ignorant. Not the worst, but I had a patient once with a stomach bleed and a small bowel obstruction. We had to put in an NG tube, tube that goes in your nose and down to your stomach, to decompress his stomach, which was pretty distended and hard. I'm inserting the tube and as soon as it hits this guy's gag reflex he projectile vomits and sprays very dark, half-digested blood all over himself, the bed, the wall, and the floor. It's basically a scene from The Exorcist. I had to dive out of the way and somehow was unscathed. He couldn't stop for almost 10 minutes as we're trying to get this thing down to where it needs to go. Finally finish placement and it immediately suctions out almost 3 liters of this black sludge that is old, digested blood. Patient was mortified and we had to play it off like oh no no it's fine, it's really common to vomit during the procedure. We'll just go get some towels and clean you up. My coworker and I left the room and just stared at each other in silent shock. Had a patient who needed a lower gi study to find slash fix a bowel bleed. To get a study done you need to poop clear mucus. Three days we bowel prepped with heavy laxatives and enemas. He barely pooped anything. He puts on the call light at 6.45, 15 minutes before my shift ends. He calmly says, I kinda wanna try and poop. He said it so casually I figured he was going to toot out another gas bubble and walk back. He stood from the bed, took one step, and the floodgates burst. Three plus days of the most rancid liquid stool I had ever encountered. It just wouldn't stop. He left a river of stool from the bed to the bathroom, coated the walls as he bent to park his butt on the toilet, and continued to dump out seven people worth of poop. In my nine years I have never seen that much come out of a person. He was not a large man. He was so embarrassed but I just kept my face as solid as possible, grabbed half the linen closet and three packages of cavi wipes, and sopped it up. Told him this happens all the time. Motorcyclist came in after someone left turned without checking. He had gone over the hood, slid and somehow somersaulted landing on his ass sitting up. He slid across intersection mostly on his ass, getting serious road rash. Luckily he was only a block from hospital and ambulance. They pack him and bring him to the ER. 
we end up cutting off his chaps and jeans and begin the cleanup of gravel and sand embedded in his thighs and ass when all of a sudden, his testicles fall out of his scrotum. He had basically sandpapered a hole in his scrotum while skidding on his ass. The attending pauses, grabs the saline, irrigates scrotum and nuts, fondles them back into place while humming. I handed him some gauze to pack the wound and smiled at the patient who was under a local. Then I went on break, went fetal and dry heaved. My aunt started her nursing career in a county hospital, which means you get all the homeless folks. A guy came in with the whole of the back of his leg and butt utterly and very deeply infested with maggots. He just hadn't gotten around to coming in earlier, he said. The depressing thing is that while it was a first for my aunt, it was by no means the last. Apparently it's more common than you'd think. As a medical student doing my first placement in the emergency department, I was waiting outside the triage room to ask the nurse something. I was the lowest ranking, most clueless person in the department. I knew a lot about the Krebs cycle, not a whole lot about, you know, medicine. A young man came up to me and said he was sorry to disturb me, he just wanted to check, it was just, well, not to cue jump or anything, but he wanted to check, can this definitely wait for triage? He then unwrapped a towel from his hand and showed me his thumb, which he had dropped a loaded barbell onto. It was shattered, just flattened, with splinters of bone coming out. I stared at it. He stared at it. I stared at it. Then I told him oh yes, no problem at all, he'd better take a seat and I'd make sure someone was with him right away. I worked as a tech in the ER for a while and had a woman in her 40s present with burning and pain down below, discharge and a bad smell. I got the cart set up for a vaginal exam, got her vitals, blood and urine, she couldn't pee because of the pain she said, all the basic jazz you do when someone comes into the ER. I process my samples and let the nurse know everything is done and she goes to talk to the woman and it essentially goes as this, no, she hasn't had any trauma, no no assault, no she doesn't know what's going on, but it started about three weeks prior. Long story short, we get the doctor as the woman refused to let the nurse take a look. And we are all in the room when the doctor turns the light on under the drape and immediately asks if she's been using any medication vaginally, there's clearly a lot of irritation and swelling as well as a very strong odor and she hadn't even inserted the speck yet. The woman says no, nothing. At this point the nurse goes to get some saline and I'm left to hand off tools and handle any swabs. The first swab handed to me was literally tinged a pale green, clearly infection. I'm capping it and the woman smells the odor slowly filling the room finally and starts apologizing. I had to say while trying not to gag no no need to apologize, I've seen much crazier things, just relax and we will get you all fixed up. Well, the nurse comes back with saline and the doctor starts essentially flushing this woman's vagina trying to clear out all this discharge and infection so she can see what's going on, and all of a sudden she stops and asks if she's sure she hasn't been putting anything in her vagina to treat any medical condition, even something not given by a doctor. And that's when we found out for about a month. This woman had been douching with a bleach and water mix to try and cure a yeast infection, because she read that in hospitals we washed down with diluted bleach to kill germs and thought it would work. She was riddled with chemical burns and infection and was immediately transported to a bigger hospital. <laughs> ER Tech here, a few months ago we had an elderly gentleman come in presenting with shortness of breath. As I was getting him into the gown and into hospital socks, I noticed very old, yellowing bandaging around his foot. I inquired to its purpose and he told me it was a large wound on the back of his heel that wasn't getting better. I asked him if I could unwrap it to inspect it slash possibly rewrap it, basic wound care is one of my duties, and it was a literal hole in his heel about 4 centimeters in diameter, skin necrotic around the edges, with a large flap of skin covering the middle. I wasn't terribly shocked, until I swore I saw the skin flap writhe a little bit. I got the patient's consent to look under the skin flap and sweet galactic Jesus, there were three sizable maggots just chilling. I've read about it before but I have never seen it in person. My brain went what in the solar FCK and despite my attempt at a poker face, the gentleman read my reaction and asked, is it that bad? I was straight up with him and told him that the wound had maggots and needed immediate treatment and the poor guy started apologizing for bringing something disgusting. I told him, I see this more often than you think. Maggots are actually great at cleaning out dead tissue and are used as treatment sometimes. He seemed relieved by that but it was definitely my first time ever seeing a maggot infected wound. Fourth year med student here. On my ER rotation a couple months back, 
I walked into the ED and was immediately asked to help a nurse and resident put a catheter in a patient. Now a catheter placement is usually a one-person job so I was pretty confused as to why they needed my help. I walk into the patient's room, and I'm immediately greeted by a disgusting rotting flesh smell. Worst thing I've smelled in my life. The patient has to be pushing 400 pounds and has the worst edema from congestive heart failure I've ever seen. His scrotum and penis foreskin are about the size of a small watermelon, and the foreskin had swollen completely over the tip of his penis. The nurse had a speculum, tool objects used to look inside vaginas, inserted into the man's foreskin while the resident took the catheter in a hemostat, pliers type thing, and jammed it into the man's pee hole for 20 minutes. They finally got the catheter in and took the speculum out. It was covered in a thick brown discharge that looked like fermented piss shit. I still don't know how he let his scrotum and penis swell that much. I used to do psychiatric evaluations in an emergency room setting. One time, I'm evaluating this 60-year-old woman who is lying in the hospital bed. I'm asking her questions, and she stops me and says, Excuse me, but I need to pass some gas. I let her know that this is a medical setting and that is a completely normal body function and not to be embarrassed. People pass gas all the time. I was not prepared for what came next. She let it rip, and out came the loudest, wettest, and longest sounding fart I have ever heard. It was bubbly and juicy, hitting all the deep notes while ending on a squeaker. I don't think Satan could have made a noise like that with his anus. It sounded so relieving, but then the smell hit me. It was bad enough that I started to gag and had to excuse myself from the room. When I came back I politely asked if she needed a nurse for anything in case she needed to be cleaned up after that, but she declined. Obviously I've witnessed people farting before, but I've never heard or smelled anything like that before. That was something else.